Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thankful to see everybody this morning and trust that we are thankful to be here. Very thankful for that song service. Thankful for the harmony that I heard throughout the congregation. Thankful for Sister Amber's willingness to lead and for Sister Everly's willingness to, to assist. So we, uh, we are very thankful for God's grace and mercy upon us in that aspect. We uh, invite you to turn with us this morning for a little while to the third chapter of the Acts of the Apostles. Acts chapter 3. Now, begin reading at the 22nd verse. While you're getting turned there, just to kind of bring us back up to the background of this a little bit. This is the occasion where Peter and John were entering the temple and saw the lame man sitting there begging, as he had done practically, apparently, every day of his life. And this day was very much different for him. Because this day, instead of simply sitting at the gate and not being able to go into the temple and begging from others, he had received a gift greater than anything that I'm sure his mind had ever anticipated. And that was the strength to stand up and to actually go walking and leaping and praising God. And that in itself is a marvelous thing. And certainly, many people there had, had obviously seen this man because he was there daily. Uh, they had certainly seen this man. They knew that his lameness was not a joke, that it was not a story, that it was not a put on. So they understood that what they had seen was truly a miracle in and of itself. And as is so often the case, and I think it's wonderful to, to realize that the lame man, even though Peter was the one that took him by the hand and pulled him to his feet, you notice it says that he went walking and leaping and praising God, which was certainly the correct attitude. But apparently everybody out there on, on Solomon's porch didn't get that. Because they ran together to see this man and... and and we're looking at Peter and John, I can imagine, you know, the, the, the whispers and the comments and the thoughts and the questions that might have been going on there. And Peter recognized that. And he said to him, he said, why don't you steadfastly on us as though we've done anything about ourselves? And he began to tell them, this was done in the power of that Jesus that you denied and that you crucified. Now, he further told them, I understand that you did it ignorantly, as did your rulers. But nonetheless, God's will was being done. God's will was being performed. It was according to God's will and purpose. So beginning in the 22nd verse, we find... We find for Moses truly said unto the fathers, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me. Him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. Now, when, Mo when Moses said that God would raise up a prophet like unto him, I don't think for a moment that Moses was saying that he has the same powers or the same authority that Jesus had. But what he was saying was, Moses was, if you will, a mediator, the, the mediator of the law covenant. He stood between Israel and God. He prayed on Israel's behalf. It was to Moses that God extended the law that he had written into the tablets. It was to Moses that God spoke and told them, you tell this to Israel. So what Moses was saying was that God was going to raise up somebody that was going to tell them what God said and what God meant and what God's purposes were for them. 
A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me. Him shall ye hear in all things, whatsoever he shall say unto you. In other words, it was going to be a, a, a requirement, if you will. It was going to be necessary in order for us to walk and live and have fellowship in his kingdom here. It was going to be absolutely necessary that we heard all things that this prophet was going to say. That we heard all things and that we did all things. You see that? Uh, him shall be here in all things. That word hearing carried more of a connotation than listening with your ears. Have you ever had your, your, your daddy and your mom say to you, do you hear me? Hmm? You know, they wasn't asking you, did the sounds they made penetrate your eardrums? What they were asking you was, do you understand the instructions I've given you and are you ready to get about getting that done? Do you hear me? I pretty well knew when my daddy ever looked at me and said, boy, do you hear me? <laughs> it was way past time to straighten up and pay attention. And it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear that prophet, that prophet, no, it's not the prophets, but that prophet, that prophet that God would raise up, that will hear, that will not hear that prophet, shall be destroyed from among the people. Now, a lot of folks immediately, what they read there is, if you don't obey Jesus, you're going to be eternally <coughs> separated from God. But let me call your attention again to what the scriptures say to you here. Which shall not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. It does not say that they would be destroyed from the family of God or from the presence of God or from the knowledge of God. They would be destroyed from among the people. What people? The people that God had made in the Sabbath to covenant with. The people that God had sent the prophets to. The people that God had called to hear and obey and understand the words of the prophets. There is consequence in our lives for failing to do the things that we understand the Lord has told us to do. Plain and simple. Failing to do the things that he has told us in our hearts that we ought to do is going to lead to our destruction. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to get us turned out of the church. That doesn't necessarily mean that our brothers and sisters are going to shun us. But you know what? I'm going to assure you of this this morning, that God has the power and the authority that I don't care how, many, how regularly you come and sit in the congregation, God can exclude you from any benefit that, that, that you might otherwise receive from the Word of God, that He is able and capable of, and I'm persuaded does, yes, even from my own experience, set us aside from the joy and the rejoicing that's found among His people when we fail to hear the words of that prophet when we fail to hear, not only with, with, with an acknowledgement of the ears, but with a fervency of heart and, and a zeal full of desire and a purpose to go out and do those things that we have heard, that we can find ourselves removed from the people. I don't know about you. I've had seasons where I felt like my life had been destroyed. Now, nothing, nothing outwardly changed. Maybe nobody else was even aware of it, but I was. I know at one of those seasons in my life, it had, things had become, and this was many, many years ago, it seemed that things had become so dry and so dull, and, and, and I, I could not find any peace or any hope or any help to the extent that, that I... I I couldn't sleep at night for being concerned about the fact that I seemed to have been destroyed 
from among the people. I went, but I couldn't feel the fellowship. I could see the love, but I couldn't feel the love. I could hear the words, but I couldn't feel the preaching of the gospel. And, and, and it was a terrible time for me. So much so that one morning, about 3 o'clock in the morning, in the midst of one of the awfulest thunderstorms that, that ever has been, I actually crept from my bed and crept from the home where I was staying. And in all of that thunder and lightning and pouring rain, I went out in the yard and knelt down by a tree there in the backyard. And I, I, I finally, all I could do was just beg God, if you won't let me live, then please let me die. If, if I cannot find again the peace and the joy and the consolation that I once had among your people, then please show me enough mercy not to let me to continue to live in this condition, in this situation. And at that time in my life, I was probably 19, 20 years old. And I knew I had been destroyed from among the people, and I knew why. I'm thankful that it pleased God to hear me. I'm thankful that in the midst of that storm, thunder, and lightning, and pouring down rain, that I had a peace restored unto me that I hadn't felt in what seemed like a long, long time. Because I'm going to tell you now, you don't have to go without the peace of God very long for it to seem like a very, very, very long time. Yeah, and all the prophets from Samuel and those that follow after, as many as have spoken, have likewise foretold of these days. Of the days when you, in your ignorance, crucified the Son of God. But in so doing, you were actually fulfilling God's purpose. How many times do you think perhaps in our ignorance we have actually done the will of God? We didn't, we didn't see it. We didn't understand. We weren't even thinking about it. They weren't thinking about doing the will of God. They'd been stirred up by the high priests and, 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 and the rulers of that day at, to, 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 to yelling for the crucifixion of this man who just, just hours before they had lined, they had thronged the, the, the roadway coming into Jerusalem and, and, and were crying, Hosanna to the Lamb of God. These very same people said, you turn the rabbis loose on us. We don't want anything more to do with this man, Jesus. Ye are the children of the prophets. And of the covenant which God made with our fathers. And you see, if we're not real careful, you got to keep reading. If we're not real careful, we're going to automatically begin to focus on, well, well this, is, this only applies to, to the nation of Israel. This only applies to national Israel. You're the children of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying unto Abraham, and right there, if you're like me, the first place your mind goes is to considering the covenant, the, the, the natural covenant of circumcision that God made with Abraham to set Israel apart as his covenant people according to the law. And we often think that that is the covenant. Ye are the children of the prophets. And of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying unto Abraham, And in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. See, the covenant that Peter was looking at here was not a covenant of circumcision of the flesh. It was not a covenant about what was done in the flesh. It was not a covenant about a specific nationality here, but rather it was this covenant, this covenant, this promise that God had made unto Abraham, that in thy seed, not seed.
blessings in thy seed, pointing to Jesus Christ. In thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. All the kindreds are family of the earth. Not just Abraham's family. Not just those that were born Israelites. But that all families of the earth would be blessed. This is the covenant that God made with Abraham. This is the covenant that still applies to us today. This is the covenant that will continue to be applicable to all of God's people as long as time shall stand. That in his seed shall all the kindreds, all the families of the earth be blessed. Can I tell you that outside of him, there really isn't any blessing? We may, we may have moments of fleeting joy, moments of fleeting happiness. You ever, you ever saw something like, you know, if I could just get that, I'd be happy. If I, could, if I could just get that car, if I could just have that pickup truck, I'd be happy. And you went and squirmed and worked and, and got that car or that pickup truck and you were ecstatic until the first payment came to you. <laughs> then you weren't so happy anymore, were you? You see, happiness that is based on the things in this world is fleeting. You think, oh, if I could just get that job, I'd be so happy. And y'all until you get to that job and find out that job got people in it just like the last one you had. All the times, all the things that we that we set our attention on, oh, that would just make me so happy. And, and, and it's so fleeting, isn't it? And it's so frustrating when it, when it just leaves away. The, the happiness, the blessing that is lasting and that is consistent is in that prophet, Jesus Christ, whom God made covenant with Abraham, that in him would all the families of the earth be blessed. What a wondrous thing it is to rest in that simple truth that regardless of all the things that might make us different in one another's eyes and all the things that we might think separate us in one another's eyes and all of the old hateful prejudices that we've learned over the years. And they are just that. I hope you... I hope we have become mature enough to realize that and that we try every day to overcome it. Our prejudices are not bound in the love of Jesus. They are bound in the hatreds that we have been taught. That's a teaching we need to let go. That's a teaching we need to turn loose on desperately. And we don't need to let the folks that in this world that are bound and determined to keep that hatred stirred, we do not need to look to them for help or for instruction or for counsel or for understanding. We need to look to the Lord and trust in the Lord and believe in Him and His grace and His mercy to satisfy that which we stand in need of in being able to live peaceably with God and His people. In thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. Unto you first, having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you. God, first and foremost, has sent his son Jesus into your lives to bless you. Now sometimes, like, you know, we're, we're kind of prone sometimes, aren't we, to, to, to try to, to, to treat God for faith, like, like, like a genie in, in a lamp, you know. I'll, I'll, I'll rub the lamp when I need something. I'll ask him for favors. I'll, I'll, I'll ask him for, for 
things that, that I think I want, and things that I think I need, and otherwise well, I'm just happy to just go on my way. I used to work with a fellow. He did it tongue in cheek. He did it jokingly. But one of his favorite expressions was, when, especially when he got in a little trouble, got, this, got you know. And when I say trouble, I don't necessarily mean you know that he was in trouble with the law or anything like that. Sometimes if he ran into a, to a stick, he was an electrician. If he ran into a problem with one job, you'd hear him say, "Lord, if you let me get over this, and I promise I'll get over the next one by myself." Yes. <laughs> How many times? Do we find that attitude in us? Lord, help me, help me now, and I'll, I'll, call, I'll call you again if I need you. <clears throat> See, the truth is, there's never a breath or a heartbeat that we don't need him. There's never a situation or circumstance in our lives that we don't need him. Yeah, when we're having hard times, we need him. But I want you to know this morning, and I pray to God that you understand this morning, that when everything seems to be just as right with you as it could possibly be, you need Him. But notice the blessing that He sent. Unto you first, God sent Him to bless you in turning away every one of you from his iniquities. You think about that for a minute. Most times when we feel blessed, it's when somebody's patted us on the back and given us an attaboy, isn't it? It's, it's when, we, when we've got something that kind of soothes us and not many of us ever wanted, well, if left to ourselves, none of us would have ever wanted to come face to face with our iniquities. We, we like to believe that we do good, don't we? We like to believe that we are good. We like to believe that 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 you know that we make that we are that we make good decisions and right decisions and, and I'm not saying you don't, but what I am saying to you is this that if you do, you do so by the grace and the mercy of God. You do so because God has kept you in those times that you made poor decisions. I remember one time hearing a man interviewed that had been very successful in life and seemed to always make wise decisions. And the interviewer asked him, he said, you know, what, what do you attribute your ability to making good decisions to? And he said, well, I found that, that you know, good decisions are a matter of experience. And then he went on to say, and unfortunately, experience is a matter of bad decisions. With God, There are no bad decisions. If we are heeding his prophet, if we are listening to that prophet, there are no bad decisions. We might be called upon to make some decisions sometimes that we don't really understand. We might be called upon sometimes to, to walk a path that we never dreamed, to, 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 to labor in, in a field that, that we never thought about. But Jesus came to bless us. And that blessing begins with turning away, turning us away from our iniquities. Turning us away from those things that we do that aren't pleasing to God. Now, the simple truth is, I can't turn away from what I don't see, from what I don't know. So in order to turn away from my iniquities, it first had to please him to show me my iniquities. That was not a pleasant sight. It's still not. I'm thankful that God has apparently over the years blessed me to have apparently more or less a cheerful countenance. And I've got every reason to. Every reason to. But I had a brother say to me here a few weeks back, he said, I want you to do something for me. I said, what's that? He said, sometime whenever you are just foaming at the mouth mad and, 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 and till you can't see straight, he said, I want you to call me on FaceTime because I want to see it. <laughs> and 
My only response to him was, brother, that's not anything you ever want to see. <laughs> it's not anything I ever want to see. Because to see that means that I am face to face with my iniquities again. And while I understand the necessity, and I'm thankful, I am thankful that God has shown me that he has blessed me with his son, Jesus Christ, that I might see my iniquities. But in seeing my iniquities, the blessing is that he has also come and granted me the grace to turn from my iniquities, that I don't have to continue in those things, that I don't have to love those things. And when I stumble upon new iniquities, if you will, that in his blessing, He turns away every one of you from iniquity. And this is truly the beginning of heeding, of hearing that prophet is recognizing that iniquity and recognizing that he and he alone turns us from our iniquity and that when he has turned us, we don't need to go back to that. If you, you really stop and think about the scripture that talks about how we, we sometimes return to those things like a hog to its wallet and a dog to its vomit. That's pretty graphic, isn't it? And, 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 and your initial thinking is, yuck! But a dog didn't have any problem with it because that's his nature. And if we are not heeding the words of that prophet. If we are not doing the things that that prophet has said to us to do, that he has said to me, do you hear me? Then I can look for some destruction. I'm going to be just like that dog. I'm going to try to go back to other ways and other things and doing things in a way that aren't honoring and pleasing unto God. You see, we need not ever think that because God has called us and set us apart that we are not capable of disobedience. Now, I will assure you that you are not capable of losing your eternal salvation. I believe the scripture teaches that clearly. But that does not mean that you cannot live your life in such a way that you will find yourself destroyed from among the people. If you've never experienced that, then praise God. And I pray you never do. Just take it from me. That's not somewhere you want to go. That's not somewhere you want to be. That's not something you want to experience. I promise you firsthand, that's not something you want to do. What a blessing God has granted us to walk with and to live among and to have a part in his people, his covenant that he made with Abraham that assures us that in his seed, in Jesus Christ, in that prophet, all families of the earth are blessed. We are blessed that he turns us from our iniquities. May we always be thankful and grateful.